So the psychiatry, uh, the psychiatry service here uh, covers 50% uh, of the land mass of the island of Newfoundland. So we cover from Eastport to Westport. Our catchment is uh, 100,000 people. So again, 20% of the population of the province. Um, I guess the Canadian Psychiatric Association would probably recommend the number of psychiatrists we have in the region should probably be in the range of 12 to 16 uh, psychiatrists, uh, and we have eight. So it's a, it's a bit of an underserviced um, service, for sure, and also faces the challenges uh, that uh, geography and rurality obviously impose upon our clinical service. I was in practice here for uh, approximately uh, a couple of years and uh, very quickly became overwhelmed with the number of consultation requests uh, that were coming to my service. And so fairly early um, in, uh, I guess, my clinical experience uh, in this community recognized that we were going to have to start looking at more innovative ways of servicing the population when you have the limited resources that we do. And so I, I think that one of the things that became very clear to me very early in the course of uh, my uh, clinical career was the fact that uh, much of the services are delivered by family physicians and that they're the first point of, point of contact. 90% uh, of patients will go to their family physician if they have a mental health issue or a psychiatric issue. So it became very clear to me uh, fairly early in my career that there was a lot of highly motivated family physicians, highly capable family physicians, who were really the first point of contact. So some of the things that I started looking at uh, fairly early was how to strengthen and support the relationship with the family physicians to kind of enhance their comfort and capacity to manage the care. And so that's, that's a model essentially, it's called collaborative care, uh, collaborative care psychiatry. So it, it differs a little bit from some other models of psychiatry, whereas we just kind of act as the consultant and the patient has to come to us. So we started looking at how do we build some bridges and networks within uh, primary care and family medicine in particular, and look at what are some of their educational needs, what are some of the special skills uh, that would help them to feel more comfortable uh, to be able to both assess and treat patients with mental illness. And so some of the things, so that started, we started out doing some education days and uh, kind of um, surveyed, uh, you know, the family physicians. And we found in particular uh, that they're really comfortable with a lot of things, um, but there's certain areas of uh, mental health that are real challenge to them because some of the medications can have significant side effects. Uh, and of course, there's always concerns about could patients be suicidal or violent. So we started getting into some education days. And then we started kind of, I think, building stronger partnerships, obviously, with Memorial University, uh, who recognized the value that this type of collaborative model is valuable and a leading practice nationally and globally, for sure, and started to uh, enhance, I guess, their academic presence here. So we've been fortunate that uh, we've been able to partner, as I said, with Memorial University and uh, also with the Discipline of Family Medicine. To, uh, to strengthen that. And so really that's turned into now some new uh, educational opportunities. So we have one of the few um, psychiatry rotations now. So we have psychiatry learners at a fairly senior level come for a few months and work closely with family medicine and myself. And we've also been over the last few years in particular starting to uh, look at developing uh, and supporting curriculum with uh, family practice learners to help kind of identify what are the specialized skill set that you need, especially in a rural setting where you don't have easy access to mental health services or psychiatry. Uh, you know, it's a very exciting way to practice. Um, I think that, um, uh, you know, I, I keep feeling um, that, you know, rural Canada is an indicator of, of some of the, the, the problems that are systemic nationally, and we feel it a bit more acutely. There's definitely a national shortage of psychiatrists and, uh, and, you know, that's being felt increasingly in urban centers like St. John's, uh, but we've probably felt the impact of it a bit more directly, uh, as I said, just by looking at my own wait list. So I think that uh, collaborative psychiatry is definitely the way of the future uh, because the number of psychiatrists that are, that are available and the increasing demands from the communities 
are, is really outpacing the old models of psychiatric service delivery that we have.